about to do this, what mm. to do, and I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm enjoying this. Mm. And then it got to a stage where I just was like, you know what, I want to be a pro. I didn't know what a pro box is, what it meant to become a pro, yeah. but just one day I went, I'm just going to have a pro, pro fight. And that was all I wanted to do. Yeah, and yeah. then obviously now I've had seven, so. Wow. What were the sports did you do before the boxing? Um, we know you had a bit of talent in different sports. Yeah, so we did um, the whole family just show jumping, so the yeah. horse riding, wow. yeah, so wow. I show jumped horse to, you know, a decent enough mm. level. And then one road for England, wow. uh, and my cousin. And Yes, yes, yes. Welcome to the 13th of Final yeah. Round podcast. And today, you have a special guest here. Yes, we do. We have the hottest prospect Jeez. in the wow. country. Yeah. My phone's blowing up from <laughs> people like Tunde and Anthony Yard and so on and so on, saying that this gentleman here is the next big thing to come out of the UK. We have Kyle Davis Jeez. in the house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, this is a real pleasure, right? So let's go through some of the phone calls I've had recently. I've had Tundi chatting to me about you, how well you've been doing. We know that you've been doing well with Ben. We know you've been doing well with Lyndon Arthur. And so we feel blessed today to get past the chat and actually be in front of you <laughs> and have the chat directly to you. So first of all, we want our audience at home, not just to know you as the fighter, because trust me, the kid can fight. If you hadn't seen his fights, it'd be popping up around here, he can fight. We want you guys to know about him as a person though, all right? So tell us, let's go way back when, yeah. how you made the decision to walk into a boxing gym. You know what it was? I was just trying so many stuff out and yeah. Scott being my cousin, having a boxing gym, you know, five minutes down the road, I thought, mm. I'm just going to give boxing a go. Never knew if it'd stick mm. or nothing, you know, it was just going from watching the Rocky movies and thinking, yeah. you know what? Oh, which Rocky? Which is your oh. favourite Rocky movie? Mm. One. It's got Rocky yeah, one. Yeah, it's yeah, Rocky yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that, yeah, and I just thought, you know what? I, I didn't know if I'd stick at it. It's just thought it's something to do. You know, every lad wants to box. And then mm. the more I did it, and the better I got. Mm. And the more I found myself asking people, you know, oh, can you get me on the pads? Can I spar him? Mm. Can I do that? What are your tips? Going home and watching videos and searching up how to do this properly, how to, how to throw a job, how to do this, what mm. to do. And I thought, you know what? I'm, I'm enjoying this. Mm. And then it got to a stage where I just was like, you know what, I want to be a pro. I didn't know what a pro box is, what it meant to become a pro. Yeah. But just one day I went, I'm just going to have a pro, pro fight. And that was all I wanted to do. Yeah, and yeah. then obviously now I've had seven, so. Wow. What were the sports did you do before the boxing? Um, we know you had a bit of talent in different sports. Yeah, so we did um, the whole family just show jumping, so the yeah, horse okay. riding, yeah. So wow. I show jumped horse to, you know, a decent enough mm -hmm. level. And then one road for England. Wow. Uh, and my cousin and my uncle, so. They're all quite good show jumpers, so we show jumped the whole time. I show jumped up until probably a few years ago. And you know, I just played football, um, but not. I just played for Sunday League team until I was about 14. Liverpool, 
Oh my <laughs> leave god. Leave me, leave me. I'm United. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, Liverpool. Oh, we Liverpool. keep that one. What about Stoke? We're not small Stoke. Nah. 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 <laughs> nah. nah. So we did it. Oh, we'll move that conversation. Yeah. Let's yeah. get yeah. away keep from that one quiet. What position did he play in football? I was a striker. Striker. Yeah. yeah. I was a centre back, really, but I just wanted yeah. to score. Yeah. So yeah. Like scoring goals. Yeah, I played up front. I did actually, I was top goal scorer in two seasons I played for like, played four seasons of football, two in the lower league, just the starting team. Mm. Um, and then I played with my friends in the top league, I was top goal scorer both seasons. But then once everyone started getting as big as me, I, I quit and I yeah. went boxing. I love goal, I was a goalkeeper. Yeah. I love football, but I was ne- I always into the like single sports. Yeah. That's what boxing is, isn't it? Yeah, that's sports. what that's what you I always say to people like, I've got no one to rely on once the battle goes, you know. Yeah. When you're playing football, if I'm having a bad game and I can just play a short pass and not really get too involved or, or you get subbed off or when you're in the ring you by yourself. Yeah. You can show, but and you, and, this is you. Yeah, and you can't quit. Like well, you, you can but you can't quit in the round, you know, if you you box and you gotta stay on it or it be, can become dangerous. So mm-hmm. but I think that's what I like about it. There's, ma- there's many different reasons why people box, right? So some, in my understanding, it's, it's, some of it is dysfunction. So you have a hard upbringing, so you need an outlet and aggression. But we've been speaking off camera, so we've been getting to know you. We, I, I already know you're a technician. Yeah, uh, maybe, that, maybe that's his nickname, give me his nickname, <laughs> the technician, right? But the reason why I like it is because the way you don't just say something, you break it down and explain something. So you, the what behind the why, yeah. like you're not just going to say for the jab, you say I'm going to for the jab and step off to the left for this reason. Yeah. So I already I clocked on really, really early on in a conversation with you, you actually a student of the game. Yeah. All right, so is that what you love about boxing the most? Yeah, like I always think I like learning, like all everyone that has the one-to-ones with me. Mm. I'll always say, if you're having a one-to-one with me, I'm teaching you how to box. If mm. you want a PT session, mm. go somewhere else because yeah, I don't yeah. enjoy that. So yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. always break it down. And even yeah. when I'm training with Joe, I'll say, why? Yeah. Why, you know, I get, but why am I doing that? Yeah, Can yeah. I not do this? You know, would this not work? And, and that's what I think makes you understand. Or, you know, when I was sparred, I might have been hit with a silly shot, and I think, mm. why, why has that happened? Mm. You know, what have I done that's got me into that situation? Mm. And that's how I learn, and um, that's why I just think you have to get better. You know, I, I can get in the ring and just throw, throw my hands in as hard as I can, like, mm. but that's not. You know, anyone can do that when you put pedicles on. I think actually breaking it down separates two different people then. I feel like I'm listening to myself. <laughs> I feel like I'm listening Why? to myself because the, the way you word, you word it and everything, that's how I am. Like, so I found out later in life that I was ADHD. Yeah. And so that's why I am the way I am because it's like, if you come up to me and say, can you help me move these chairs? I'll say, yeah, no problem. It's a particular reason. <laughs> Is there a particular reason though, yeah. right? And then if they can't give me a particular reason, I'll, I'll probably say, well, you're just being lazy. I'm not going to help you, right? Yeah. If you can say, oh, because we've got a party in an hour, like, no problem. Yeah. So I always have to know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah, Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. That's the I same as me, yeah. yeah. You yeah. lose for, interest of what? Just do something for a reason. If something's for nothing, then it's not wasting my time, but I have something else I can be doing. Exactly, because that makes sense. Ta- yeah, yeah, yeah. Ta- time, so in life, you pay with money or you pay with time, yeah. and time is massively important. I, th- I think with you and everything that you're putting yourself through, you know, you're investing in yourself. Like, let's talk a little bit about some of these investments, right? So you start boxing, you start learning your craft, and then you start to, because. From my understanding, you're the most travelled person in, 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 in the background. One of them, I think, so. Yeah, defo. I mean, I was talking to him about off camera. He travels all over the country to go get sparring and things like that. What, how did you arrive at that destination where you knew you needed to travel to learn your trade? And it's just maybe just getting needing the step up. You know, I, when I first went um, to Impro, I well, think about Impro. I went to Scotch Gym, mm. and he had a pro Jamal um, Ladue who was 
he had quite a few just won in, he might have won in, in Midlands while I was there yeah. and then boxing English Eliminator but he, he'd beat like Lyndon in the amateurs you know he was quite a yeah, good yeah, amateur yeah. and honestly I went from boxing four rounds you know, sparring four rounds or three rounds and gassing to getting in with Jamal and we were mm. doing six, eight, yeah. twelve, ten and I, every time I walked in the gym and I saw Jamal I thought you know it's going to be hard. But do you know what? He literally brought me, like, it made me the fighter I was then. Yeah. And then Jamal ended up retiring. And I kind of lost that one person that challenged me every Sorry. day in the gym. So obviously I just kept sparring him because I was still getting good work. And then it got to a point where I think we thought we need the next up. So we, took, we got a call to spar. Um, oh, who did we spar now? I actually remember the um, lad from Gallagher's gym who was going to box Bivol. Can't think of his name. Gallagher's gym uh, was going to box Bivol. Oh, it's, got, it's that long ago. It's bad, I can't it, remember no, Callum, the name. Callum, yeah, Callum, Callum Johnson, Johnson it was. Johnson, Got a call yeah. off yeah. Johnson for Callum. Yeah. This is uh, Christmas Eve. Yeah. I was whatever stone I was, not on weight. Yeah. Don't think I'd boxed yet as a pro. And yeah. I went and did eight rounds, eight or ten rounds of Callum off, just pure. Yeah, just so. After that. He's a we, big man. Well, he's a he's a big man. Right? He's seen the size of him. Well, yeah, it, like we, we got in. Yeah. It moving up, cut yeah. the first round, and I thought, do you know what? I learned. That's another thing. I thought, right, we've got to switch on even yeah, more. But yeah, yeah. that kind of proves to me, oh, this is the kind of sparring. So taking that little chance just snowballed, and, it, and then sparring yard when I was younger, it allowed Joe to kind of put a bit of trust in me and go, right, we're going to take the chances now. You know, you're not silly you know you're not going to put yourself in danger mm. and then we just kept going snowball you know once you spar one person they see you sparring them someone else contacts you and then once yeah, they hear you've yeah, gone and done yeah, yeah, yeah. 10 good rounds of him yeah. somebody else says oh we'll use him mm. confident as you move on and obviously yourself you're learning yeah and you learn yeah, yeah. And, and they're all different your, your all story different. your story is very similar to a good friend of mine called Matty Harris who's a heavyweight he yeah. fought in Bolton recently as well he only turns up the road for me 20 minutes at Congress with Peter Fury and he went out and did some spot I won't name him because it's his business yeah. but he basically in the middle of a, a, a lockdown and there were, there were no amateurs going so he says do you want to go do some sparring with a, a fairly high profile fighter's name he went and did really well and then the next one and the next one and the next one and before you know it because we talk we all know each other in the industry right we all talk amongst each other do you know what I mean but Obviously, for them to call you back, it means that you're representing yourself in a good way. Well, we just try, you know, turn up quiet, do the rounds people ask. You know, we don't, not videoing, not going, telling people what went on, what didn't yeah, go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, trust. Every, yeah, it's trust in it's sparring people. You don't know what, you know, I, I might have sparred someone and they've been told, don't throw a punch for a round. I don't know what they're yeah, working yeah. on. So yeah. it's just about going and getting the work and going home and, and then just carrying on about your day. It yeah. doesn't really matter what happened in the sports as long as everyone's benefiting from it. Mm. So I think that's why we get asked back as well. You know, there's three ways to, to, to have a thought process. There's to, to live in the past, that leads to negativity. There's to live in the now, and there's to live in the future. With you, you're very grounded. I think you're living a lot in the now. Like some people think too far ahead yeah. and they start thinking they're already there. And some people that think in the past live on negativity. What I get from our, all our conversations about today is that you're very much focused on day-to-day -day tasks, routine, taking it one step at a time, yeah. which is really good, you're man. Well. Yeah, it's humble. It keeps yeah. you grounded, right? It's just because I know there's a lot more to go. I've got nothing mm. to shout and rave about right yeah, now. Yeah, just yeah. let performances speak for themselves. And, yeah. and you know, if when I win, when I win a world title, I might shout about it then. But, you know, yeah. until I'm at that point, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not where I want to be. So that's why I just don't try to say too much and just keep going. Cause, mm. Mm. You know, so what's your, what's your pathway in this pro scene? Mm. What's your next step? Well, we wanted the Midlands. Midlands yeah, um, yeah. We were mandatory. Got it. Got uh, it. Liam O'Hare. Liam O'Hare. We were mandatory for it. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I don't get involved in that. It didn't happen. Yeah. Someone else is mandatory now, you know. I, re I wanted that fight, but for whatever reason, like we were ready for it. Uh, we would have had that as the next bout. Super you do it, right? Stay ready because yeah. you know, in this pro scene, man. 
the orange, bring your power blue. Mm. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 stay right. ready. That's why I've boxed again now. Like, I don't yeah. want to just wait around yeah, for the call. Yeah. Won't get uh, get another few bouts. So yeah, hopefully an area title, mm. maybe an English eliminator, mm. and then I know the two lads boxing for the English. So depends on when they, you know, on how my career goes. Maybe even box a winner. You just don't want to. I just don't want to go too far too soon. Yeah, yeah. Still. Because you've got time still. You know, you, the problem is you, you get to here, and then you've got to go all the way up to here. Then and you might not be ready for that. So yeah, it's just keep seeing what comes and seeing learning. what fights are right and learning. Yeah. And uh, when the time is right, then I can take the chances even Enjoy more. Enjoy the ride. Yeah, definitely, Enjoy because it, it gets harder and harder. Yeah, yeah, it, does, it, does. it gets harder yeah. and harder. And you know what yeah. it is? Most boxers we speak to, the blood to like, oh, it gets yeah. harder and harder. Yeah. No, it's a hard to really well. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah I can tell from 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 your feet. Yeah, it's just from how I'm training from my first bout mm. to how I'm training now, and how hard my last fight was, mm. to how hard it was the one before. The mm. one before my last one was a three round breeze, and then the next yeah. one was an eight round, mm. you yeah. know, a hard fight. So it's gone from a big step up, and now I'm on another eight rounder against a decent opponent, and it's yeah. like. There's no time for it. it's going to get harder and harder, and these people aren't even where I want to be, so it's going to get even harder and harder to get yeah, there. Yeah. Are you able to control your nerves? Like some boxers can control your nerves, some can't. Can you control it? Have you yeah, I'm them? pretty. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty chilled. I don't yeah. let the crowds um, too much. Now I've let my emotions get ahead of me like once. But that mm. was like in my third fight, mm. so mm. I learned a lot from them. Patience. I don't let anyone else to, um, you know. I get quite nervous leading up and then just before um, the nerves kind of like, as soon as the bell goes. Once you climb the ring. Yeah, like getting my hand wrapped, I'm a bit quiet, mm -hmm. but it's more the days leading up to the fight, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I'm fight, you know? <laughs> And then once I'm at the venue and I'm waiting or waiting the yeah, night yeah. before they go because I'm like, yeah. I want to do it, yeah. I'm here, mm -hmm. I'm ready, mm -hmm. I've trained, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to enjoy the fight. Mm. Don't forget to watch Rocky. No, yeah, watch Rocky before. <laughs> Rocky won the fight. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't seem to get too nervous and he's yeah, in there, so. No, yeah. but I that's I, what I mean just before, like, everyone will say to you. Yeah. I love that. Honest, you know what? I absolutely I love that. Because you ask that question, they're always like, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> this, listen, no, it's a lie. It, it's, it's a lie. It's a lie, it's a lie it's because you, you're going to get in there yeah. and you can. I explained to everyone that, oh, you're scared yeah. not to be punched, not to be hurt, it's to lose. You yeah. don't want to lose, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, that's the last yeah, thing. Yeah, you don't yeah. mind being it's punched. It's expectation. Yeah, yeah, you, you want to win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you yeah. want to win. I just want to win. The, the truth is this, right? Imagine you didn't, you was, you, there's 30,000 people in the stadium. You, you had to get your hands wrapped, you had to walk out to the arena, and, when you, and you, you know, in advance of time, there's no one in the ring. You're still yeah. nervous. Yeah. yeah, definitely, because you, you, you're coming out to everyone, like. Yeah. And the music comes on. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Someone comes and says, "Oh, your 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 next yeah. fight, you are." I'm like, yeah. Are you sure? But yeah. nah, yeah. It, it's it's scared to lose, not yeah. to um. It's not about the fight. Yeah. The way boxes, we boxers got a lot of pride. Well, it's a winner and a loser. I know yeah. you can draw, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. One wins, one loses. It's not like the team's lost or you've all done a, or your goalkeeper's let one in or someone else. Can yeah, win. like there's a winner and no one can get past that. It doesn't matter how good of a fight you put in. When someone asks you how you've done, who's not watched, you go, I lost. I think some of the nerves come from watching people around you as well. Because your, your mum's nervous around you, your trainer's nervous around you. You can see, you can see, you can feel that. We do a good system though. Yeah. We, we've got Steve, who's my second yeah. in the corner, and Steve's just. He just make it laugh. He's, yeah, he makes me laugh. He's funny. Yeah. He's just crazy. So Joe will go away when it starts to get close mm. in the changing room. Steve will sit with me because Steve can keep speaking. You know, we're always speaking about gaming or something. So we've got something yeah. to do. Whereas Joe goes and does the stressing part, you yeah. know, sorting everything out, making sure the gloves are, yeah. the opponent's got the gloves, doing all the stressing bit. So we do it well where no one's giving off nervous energy to each other. Yeah. So it keeps the change room nice and calm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a great conversation. Like, I wish more people were just a little bit more on point about what they go through, because it's not, it's not natural. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean 
Because you, you've admitted you're nervous that, like, in any way that it takes away from what you're going to do in the ring. Oh, it won't change. You know, Mike Tyson. Yeah, Mike Tyson admitted yeah, after yeah, Mike yeah. Tyson admitted after his career that while everyone thought he was this big scary guy, he, he did all that hard stuff. To like, cover it up. To cover that's all. That's what you yeah. people do different stuff to cover up. Whereas, you know, it's just. When you're walking out, just, it's different though. Yeah, when we start on the music time, then you are walking out to the ring and you got your head down, you're like, right, I'm, I'm ready. It's when you get in the ring, you're waiting for, you, you know, you've had your record yeah. called out, whatever you are, right, and you start you. to go, yeah, yeah, you know, you start to bully. As soon as you go out the door, isn't it? it's that bit where you go for the door and you, yeah. you walk in that, that little Especially bit. Especially in these small hall shows, because yeah. you just stand at the door until you're ready, so everyone, yeah. everyone can see you instead of just, yeah. yeah. You know, and I've got a rowdy bunch that come, wow. you know, we sell, uh, we, like, you know, I've got loyal people who do all right on tickets. Yeah. Yeah, we do, like, for travelling out of Stoke yeah. uh, and having to put a coach on, like, I do good and I have the same people come watch and I'm gaining people and they love, they just love it. Like, yeah. they don't like when I get it, but yeah. they all come, like, all the time and they cheer for the whole fight, they're always singing and I think that helps a lot, like, that takes some of the nerves away. Yeah. It doesn't put pressure on it, it helps that I've got people behind me yeah, and yeah. I know no matter what, they're going to be happy, so... They're just like, no matter what, yeah. I just do the best That's I can do. Got it's oh, good yeah. that you know that as well. I always say to him now, I'm, I'm, we're both nearly 50. But I'm like, I'll have another one. Yeah. <laughs> but do you know what it is? But do you know what it is? My, the people think I'm mad at like, if I'd have another one, because wherever I am and where I'm with my wife and my life, I, I just want to do one, not because I don't care if I win, lose, yeah. or draw. I just want to do, do one. I, yeah. I just do one. Yeah. But when you're younger, it's that you put all that expectation on you. You're not, you may be like, you're not financially secure, you don't have yeah. this, you don't have that. And it's like a lot of it, and, if, and, and you don't seem to be the, this one, but a lot of people do it for the wrong reasons. They're doing it because they want to impress the people in the crowd, yeah. they want to impress the family. And I tell you something, when you, some of them people that do that, I've known champions that wanted to prove the parents wrong, prove people in the neighborhood wrong, and they won titles and they've gone there. And the person that they wanted to prove it to, for 10 years, they, they're like, I'm going to prove you wrong for 10 years. And when they win it, they get well done. Yeah. And it's an anti climax. Yeah, do you know, I just so, do like, I, I did it from like, myself. I don't exactly. really. Exactly. not even tell anyone I'm a boxer exactly. if I can help it when I go out. Yeah. I can just keep that part if anyone yeah, asks exactly. what I do. So, I just. I don't say anything, I just say you're I work for me. You're mom. doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. You're doing it for you and, and, and that takes a lot of pressure off you as well because it's all a, it's all a big joke. A daft question like, are you going to knock him out, mate? <laughs> no. I'm going to try. I don't yeah. know why I'm going to ring you. Yeah. 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 I, get that. I get that a lot with yeah. having a few knockouts in a row. Yeah. Like, are you going to knock this one out? And I'm like, well, I'm going to try, but yeah. you know, whatever happens, yeah. happens. But yeah. people, you know, I've noticed that like people don't see all the hard work because no, no, no. they said some of my opponents weren't too good, but that's because I've made them lose. You know, I boxed yeah, an yeah. undefeated lad who who had, had seventy odd amateurs as well, and I stopped him in three rounds. And I, the third round, I was kind of just playing like I kind of yeah, knew yeah, yeah. he was coming. They were, like, oh, he weren't that good, mm-hmm. but actually. When he started, when the first bell went and the way he was fainting and moving his feet, I thought, oh, I'm in for There's a, lot of a things tough that fight. People say, yeah, but, a, but people, because I stopped him yeah. three rounds, people thought he's not that good. Whereas, yeah. you know, I can tell that, that people don't see everything that, yeah. that goes on behind I closed doors. Bus snores, bus slip. And yeah. Dropped. They just think like. Not everyone's educated that, that we had this one. Listen, back. Back in our day, there was a lot more journeymen, <laughs> and some of them journeymen are clever. Oh, I'd say to some everyone. Some of them journeymen could have made it and made a decision yeah. to go the way. Do you know some journeymen come out with more money than the champion? Yeah, and yeah, like I, I, I say to a lot of people who go to like think about turning over or you know some of the young pros who got in here, I say don't think that first wins are guaranteed with these journeymen because mm-hmm. if if they want to. If they want to have a real go at you, they can make it a real hard night, you know. Yeah. 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 So so, yeah, so he was a journeyman and then just decided, right, I'm going to have a go at it now. And then, so so we know a a kid called Ad Mitu is in the group, 100 and out is his his, his tagline, right? Because he had 100 fights now. (laughs) Before everyone, and I mean everybody. (laughs) And I'm on about everyone from February to like, like everywhere, like literally.
sleep. But yeah, you got it's been one, right? through the way. Yeah. yeah, and he used to be, he used to be out. I won't speak his business. I'll tell you off camera. But he used to be out every single week, more or less. Yeah. And he Probably came out with that's money. A job. He, he, in a job. He and, does make life. Yeah. You know, it, it's a good career. And you can earn. Good. And if you yeah. if you good at it, you can stay yeah. safe while doing it. Yourself, yeah. yeah, it's the, yeah. it's the ones that aren't too great that don't have yeah. a very long career. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you end up getting stopped or you know have you know, too many wars and then the license can maybe get taken off you or you're not yeah, yeah. in a fit state to box so yeah it does take a skill to do that as well i i kind of just switch off from any of my anyone in my fr friendship circle or anyone who says anything negative about a fight in front of me i just i don't even give it time mm -hmm. of day because if you haven't been in there, it's hard to speak. <laughs> yeah, you, amateur pro, even white collar. I've even yeah. got enough respect for some of the white yeah. collar guys because they're still getting in there and getting it, and they're never going to be at the level as a as a professional. It's all relevant. Yeah, it's all relevant. They still know, got in there in front of a crowd yeah. and still got hit, but people that are not even ever going to do that should just be quiet, really. Just <laughs> me. You know what yeah, I mean? It's, it's one of them sports that is like. Until you've done it, it's really hard to explain. Like people always ask me, "Does it hurt?" And I'm like, "I, I don't. Oh, cool, I, don't I can't explain." Like, yeah, it does, but yeah. you, you can't explain it to someone because your adrenaline's going yeah. and that. Like, you, you know, you can in a way to say, right? You went to school, yeah. You have any fights at school? Yeah. Yeah. Loads of fights, same way. Yeah. You got punched in the face, battered, same way. Yeah. Fight. So I'm guessing yeah. you had a lot of fights at school <laughs> because not many people fight at school. Isn't it? <laughs> Did you do fight at school? Yeah, a couple. Uh, to be fair, I had it. I stayed out on it. Do you know what? I, the yeah. first fight would have been my first fight. Like, yeah. I actually hadn't had any fights yeah. really. Were you a cock at school like me? Just Did cheeky. It? Just yeah. cheeky. Just like, yeah. look, just talking in class, you know, yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. But it was always me. It was always yeah. my yeah. voice. Yeah. But anything like fighting or nothing, I never was. That's why I went. You were a ladies man. Nah, well, yeah. but you know, when I first um, you're making it blush. Nah, I've got a girlfriend now with five years. Back in the day, back in the day, way, 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 But uh, the, the one thing they were worried that I weren't going to be. Um, tough enough or like aggressive enough to box I can remember that was a worry that my mum and my cousin had so that they didn't tell me but yeah. when we went for my first battle they thought Kyle's not he's not got it in him <laughs> but I did have it be. but you know that's what I mean the type of person that I am yeah, yeah. day to day is yeah. not the type of person that you'll get on fight night you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah sad we're we, 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 we getting nicknames for you yeah. Yeah. unless that's someone does wipe me up that you might see how come we mix just saying the technician, the silent assassin. Silent. What can we do? You need Chad GTV to, to mix them two things up. <laughs> we'll don't find we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Give me a message and ben, we'll get it on. Ben Whittaker's called the surgeon, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, it suits. It suits. You know, he's good at what he does now. So apart from boxing, what else do you do? Like, you know, from boxing. Mostly, I just wait for my mum. So we do the horses. So mum allows me to obviously have less time so mm -hmm. apart from boxing it's just working with the horses you know just doing what well, the horses man gives them, gives them oh the mine's called rick is he called rick, rick? yeah rick? slick rick. rick yeah he's a grey 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 yeah so you call yourself slick rick yeah i could be <laughs> slick rick can't take his name off him but yeah just like just normal stuff just seeing friends on the weekend yeah. um and training like it's just boxing you live the life don't you yeah like you yeah. got to like i just i wasn't you know like when i'm not in camp i will go out with my friends but I'd, i've never really drank or anything anyway mm -hmm. So I'm just going purely out for the social to see mates. So there's a, it, you got to split it up, or she go and she go crazy. <laughs> If, like most people take a job right imagine you took a job in a call center and you turned around and said yeah you did work for six weeks and said, i'm going to take six weeks off now mm. you can't do that right no. you don't no. work like that, right? No. so you, this is your job yeah so, and that's uh, what i explained to my friends that's how yeah. i like you know this is me going to work yeah it's like, good for uh, work i'm going oh, to come work on, mate. Come on, next week. yeah, <laughs> the only yeah that's the, do you know what not now no, like, no, my friends are pretty like my that. friends will tell me yeah you should be going home yeah, now yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know if it's that's like nine ten o'clock they'll be saying you can go. so they've good got French, they've good got French. to that point though where it's become uh kyle's boxing but he's not that good to oh kyle's 
but it's going know, somewhere. Yeah, Kyle sparred this person. I bet they've just had him in for fun to oh, Kyle yeah. sparred him again and again yeah. and again. Yeah. And, yeah. and then they slowly see, and then that's when the you gain the respect of yeah. people by just doing it, not by telling them. I mean, if you, now you've gone out and sparred some of the guys that, so if there's no camera there, then it's just two people training, right? Yeah. As soon as Sky Sports is there, it's like, oh, these are somebody. Yeah. Some people could take that uh, uh, the wrong way and go all arrogant, I'm this, and some people could turn around and say, well, actually, if you're all interested in watching people paint a wall, if people find that interesting, mm-hmm. there's a camera there to be a world champion painter, and decorate, right? Yeah. Ultimately, this is your job. So you don't seem to get, be getting caught up in the circus and stuff. If you, if you ever go to a circus, it's small, but as soon as the audience come in, it's big, the thing is big. Yeah. And that's a very similar analogy to boxing. Mm. Ultimately, have you figured out yet that some people see someone on TV and go, well, that person was born that way, that person is gifted to fact. Are you starting to understand that actually they're just the same as you? It just takes work. Oh yeah, it's just, that's what everyone I've sparred has always been really humble and really nice. Like I've not, yet to go in there with someone who is being the big I am or, or you know saying off that I'm better than you because this yeah. they are all normal people and they're really good at getting the work done and if the camera's there they can turn it on for the camera to yeah, you know yeah, give yeah. everyone a show yeah, and then it's straight yeah. back to business and I think yeah. that's something I have recognised that my friends might think oh what's he like in real life is he is he that this or is he that quiet or is he that and I'm like they're probably not the exact same person you know they're very good at doing what they need to do for the camera and making people tune in mm. and they also go about the business of it and that's why they're as good as they are and entertaining yeah, yeah, yeah. and that goes for all of them yeah. you know so that's something i have learned and you have to be comfortable with whatever, with whatever you want to portray it's like social media is whatever you want it to portray. Oh, it's totally, someone totally different if you're comfortable with that. Yeah. So for instance, when we talked to Ben, when we interviewed Ben, we was asking him some different questions and we, we saw a different side to yeah. it, like, because it was te- uh, technically technical questions. Yeah. It wasn't just questions like, uh, how's training camp? How, uh, are you excited about the fight? We were asking him questions yeah. about movement, like we did with you off camera, right? So we get a different response. Ben understands though that to sell tickets is created this character yeah, you know what I mean yeah. right but ultimately we know Ben's a hard worker he trains yeah. hard he looks after if we know because people tell us you have to be comfortable with what you're comfortable with because ultimately choosing to do that can put pressure on yourself yeah. because now you're and you've got to keep it up exactly. the whole time so exactly. you know you've got to keep the boxing and, and the persona up and yeah. keep that drive but you yeah. don't have to do that you could just let the you can do the talking so yeah. then you look at, let's use two characters right Muhammad Ali Mike Tyson yeah, right. right you've got one guy who talks all the time and does all this and he is what Mike he is and he gets too. money Mike didn't talk. No, yeah, but just went aggressive. out and did it. Yeah, Mike didn't did it talk. In a different he didn't talk. Way. But the point that I'm getting at, he didn't talk. Mm-hmm. He did. He did talk with his hands, didn't mm-hmm. he? Yeah. He walked out black, didn't say. Oh, and they both got the same, in, same kind of in a different way. Yeah. Like in a different way, right? So ultimately, you just got to figure out what you're comfortable yeah, with. It's just finding what works yeah, for you. I mean, that, it's harder as well now because the social media is so. Mm. You have to be like the times are changing, whereas. Mm. Sometimes one of them ways doesn't work, so you've got to find what works. But that's what I mean. Inside. Yeah, and, and it, when you know inside there, then then you see my personality comes out more and more in a box. Like, mm. like I was yeah, saying, I'm a completely different person. You know. Yeah, I can see that. Like I'll have a show about, I'll, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll have a, I'll talk to someone in the ring, or I'll be about business. You know, that would be my yeah. personality really yeah. coming out in the rings and doing something that I love. Whereas outside the ring. We've yeah. all got a different sort of person, different yeah. size to our person, haven't we? It comes out in different times, like you get different, you know, people get a different kind of you out of you, depending on how they are as well with you. Mm-hmm. What is it you would like, as you're growing through the ranks and people tuning in, what would they want people to know about you? Mm-hmm. Oh, it's a hard one. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a hard one. Um, it's a hard one. I mean, I can go. I'll it's go. just whatever they want to see. Like, I just don't mind being perceived of however people take me. You know, I'm not too bothered about. I've, people have said I'm nice. People have said I'm arrogant. You know, like it doesn't. Either one, I always say to people, that's your 
I know I'm a nice person, you know, and I'm and I'm very just honest. Where so that's what I think. I think take away what you want to take do, away. Do you have a greater purpose, though? So for me, when I was 14, I, 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 kids were watching cartoons and everything, and then I come home from school, and uh, I turn on the TV randomly. It was a god moment because it's like there's no reason for me to turn the TV on at that point. And this documentary was on TV called Champions Forever. Have you ever seen it? No, no, no. Greatest documentary you'll ever see. Good. Greatest boxing yeah. documentary you'll ever see. All right, it's Muhammad Ali, Ken Norton, Live Holmes, George Foreman, all in one documentary. And I was, Muhammad Ali was was talking, and then just went like that, 14, and he's like, and he started the rumble in the jungle. He's just when he goes, yeah. attention. You listen to me though, like that he's going off and I'm like wow like that and I could feel the you know the goosebumps on my hand who's this guy who's this guy and I, and I would come home from school for whole 18 months until that cassette tape broke well, I was good right just yeah, well, and I'd watch that every day while people watch cartoons and I'd listen to Muhammad Ali mm. and then something inside of me yearned and that thing yearning was I want to use I want a box I want to be successful so I can change people because I saw him talking about people starving in Africa people are doing this, people doing that, and I'm like, I want a greater purpose of so boxing. I want it to be a, a, a platform for a greater purpose. Now we talk about Mayweather. Mayweather's then uses that platform to go into real estate or property to be a businessman. That's why Mayweather's never been loved like Ali, because people yeah, with, different they can see that Mayweather's is more about himself. Yeah. Whereas Muhammad Ali was more about others. So Muhammad Ali died pretty much poor. He didn't hold on to any of that money. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So they great purpose, right? And we all have a decision what we do with influence, all right? So after boxing for me, I come out of boxing, I met my wife, I found God, then I started going to church, and before I know it, I'm, 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 I'm a leader in the mm -hmm. church, talking mm -hmm. to people and helping people, right? So great purpose. And that's why with this podcast, what we do is we have two things that we want to do this podcast from what we've learned from our boxing experience. One, experience. help the fighters, get the exposure to fighters, give advice to fighters, whatever we can do to help them. No clickbait stuff. Um, so if you're tuning in, no <laughs> clickbait stuff, trust, let the fighters know that we're there for them and help people what are suffering from mental health. I'm going to say that, yes, yeah. as well. Because it's a big thing in boxing, yeah. you know, we go through after this fights that get out and, it, and the, they're in terrible. No platform to help them. No, oh, yeah, it's a... It, the, the boxing just, it's just, um, what can I say? The boxing is like, it's, it very, them, yeah, yeah, it's very yeah, full yeah. on, so and then yeah, once it's gone, out, yeah. Speak out. So imagine, imagine you've got a girlfriend and you spend all your time with her, right? And I don't know if you've been through heartbreak. If you have, it's a whole. Oh no, no, I'm five years stronger than right, so. I pray no. you never go through. <laughs> I've, I've been through it twice before. I'm like, oh, it's horrible, man. You can't eat. You know what I'm talking yeah, about, right? Like, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, John. <laughs> you can't eat. You can't sleep. But what it is is, you go from having all this time with a person and it's gone. And it's like, what do I do now? Yeah, and boxing's the same thing. Yeah, boxing yeah. is my first love. I always said that. My first love, my first heartbreak as well. Because after boxing's over, it's like, oh, I got all this time back. Because you put so much time yeah, into that's it. That's something I thought about. Like, if I ended up not being able to box again, I'd be lost. But like, like you were saying, it's hard for me because I got into boxing. I just wanted to be pro. So I've already actually done what? I dreamed of doing it's yeah. only now mm. that I've started to go on more so really my biggest purpose now is to win mm. titles and actually to just make everyone Joe mum girlfriend nan everyone that's put time in to actually make them happy and successful that is actually my goal now um, and I really enjoy teaching as well when I'm a one-to-one -one, so it'd be you know to to win as much as i could mm. to make as much money as i could to come out safely mm. and then hopefully start a new generation and doing what joe did for me for someone else you know bringing someone else through and having my own gym and that's kind of where i'm i'm at for for what i want to be i want to do and i'm sure the more i'll do the more i might branch into helping this kind of people or putting a bit of money into that or yeah, yeah. you know finding different things as i'm going and, and learning but in the minute is to make like 
you know, to buy me more miles, buy myself house, make sure Joe can buy himself yeah, house, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and have a big house. You, you, you do it. So that was you very that free. Goal yeah, you set that goal. Yeah, that's definitely. And you need that. You need that because yeah. otherwise, what's the point of getting out of bed without without direction, without yeah. purpose? Oh, to not, to not sport, yeah. to not want anything out of yeah. it either, you know. It's got to be benefiting you in some way to be punched yeah. in the air yeah. all, yeah. all the time. It's the, one of the most dangerous things that a person can do and, and the training, people think the training is about <laughs> hitting people. Actually, it's the opposite. And it's going oh, out to not get hit. You know, we do yeah. like the classes that we do. We kind of spar them a lot because yeah. it's not about just we want to teach people. You know, it's not about like just. I have that many people that come in for the first time and mm. friends that have trained that thought, oh, I thought this was going to be much easier. I thought you're just going to yeah, punch yeah, each yeah. other until you break it down. And yeah. it's with fitness. And oh, yeah. It's, it's, Tell us yeah. about your relationship with Joe because you mentioned him a lot, though. What does yeah. Joe mean to you? Because I'm picking oh, up on that. I wouldn't box really without Joe. Yeah. Now, it'd be, you know, if, you know, for whatever reason, Joe couldn't train me or it'd be hard for me you know yeah it would be hard um just ended up there's a lot of love there and there yeah and from, just from when we meet joe yeah way, yeah let's from, go way from, back yeah, yeah, yeah let's go back. Back. Yeah. way back yeah it's from like um yeah it was like i was 15 or 16 just moving around gyms went to a couple of gyms in stoke but they were that you know that many people in that I weren't getting a look in that I wanted maybe being selfish you know I wanted some one-to-one -one time and I know not everyone can have that but mm. we ended up finding a gym up north which about 30 minute drive I only had five amateurs at the time mm -hmm. um, so you know as soon as I went in there my foot was straight in the door uh, did some training there mm. went for my first amateur was supposed to have the head coach mm -hmm. and he ended up forgetting that he was double there was two of us fighting on the night so he was like oh joe you can go with kyle i'd never met him mm. did pads like the night before went went for the bout and then just ended up just doing one-to-ones together mm. and it just built from there so ever since amateur. yeah ever since the first amateur fight it's been going for all seven of them mm. and then all seven pro fights you know mm. so so is he more to you than just a trainer? Oh yeah, he helps me with... So you stole Joe from the amateur yeah. gym, right here. Yeah, <laughs> I said that, yeah, I, I kind of... Stuff happened yeah. at that amateur gym and now I started falling out of yeah, love yeah. with mm. the amateurs and the gym, you know. Little stuff that I went yeah, to go into. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. We, he, he, he said to us, we've seen it all. Yeah, you know, world. stuff was yeah. going on that I thought... I, just, so I was ending up turning up to the gym and not getting out of the car mm. and going, I don't want to go in. Mm. Right. And then I think Joe got to that point as well because I think he was both aimed at the two of us, you know, yeah. with such good relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. You know, an opportunity is coming for me. I think, you know, but you everybody know, you know what that's about in every se sector, right? So I worked in a call, done call center jobs and I've been through it there. We even go through it on this side. Yeah. So when we turn up to press conferences now, some people, the other people, you know what I'm saying, like, some of the people that do what we do won't talk to us. The same people won't talk to us or talk to everyone else, but no, do you know what that means? The want some that you've got. The friend. Yeah, that's what, well, you know, that's you're always what, 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 because it means you're doing something right. Yeah, you're that, always that's what we do, because that's, that's why we just ended up moving, uh, but then it was locked down, so yeah. we were just training in my back garden, yeah, yeah. and then we went to, obviously, Scott's gym, mm. Um, I had some pro fights there and then ended up finding this place so we've literally so gone through to get this place or did we find it or oh, was it in Mum? Yeah, in Mum was you, is that Joe back yeah, there? that is Joe yeah back there yeah. we're going to have to yeah, get one just we'll, cool. we'll but yeah, one yeah we um, we were thinking about moving not because you know anything was going wrong within that gym we just wanted you know it's both of our dreams to get a, a gym and then when summer comes up like this, sometimes you've got to yeah you've got, you've got to be selfish and just take yeah. it and it was a good you know it was the right move yeah you know in the end yeah it's a nice setup you know mm. we can come in yeah. it, we know that i'm gonna if i won't go on the bags mm. i can go on the bags if i won't use the ring i yeah. can use the ring if i won't use the fitness equipment so you've got your space it's got it and especially when stuff's getting tougher now mm. and we have people down for sparring mm. it's nice having them in a quiet gym because then they don't feel like everyone's watching so is this gym open full-time or yeah it, well normally like is it open to so can enter into it 
Yeah, so like anyone can come in. Set times. Yeah, time. it's not even really set times because yeah. we, we train on a set time, yeah, but you know, people that have been coming for a while, we tell them the key code because there's cameras up anyway. And if they want to use the gym in the day while we're not here, okay. it's fine, you know, because it's quite, yeah. it's only really my friends that use it as well or family. It's like, you don't do friends discounts, though. You, you make nah, it fair, right? nah, this, business, this, is business is business. Well, you have got light. Yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what you got to do. But yeah, they could, you know anyone can come in and use it or join in the classes. And then obviously yeah. now we're starting to look for more pros, so we've kind of opened it up. And I think it's the best thing because I think people used to think it was just me and Joe mm -hmm. and no one else could come in mm -hmm. until we started bringing other people in. Mm -hmm. And then I think that makes other people think, oh, they're training with Kyle. Maybe I can go. Mm -hmm. And that's how we've built up mm. a few more pros. It's always been me and Joe, so I think everyone thinks. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's just been like that because that's how it's happened. It's not mm. because it, it's just Kyle and Joe. Like, mm. we've got Jack now who's joined, Erin who's mm. joining now. So that's two more young pros, both mm. 18. Mm. As, mm. as you're moving on through the programmes, yeah. It'll be it will be noticing. It will grow. It will be coming here. Yeah, it will grow. I want to see podcasts come out as well. When I was training with Naz, before Naz was world champion, it was fairly steady. As soon as Naz won the title. Yeah, that's People how come it, from all over the world. And I think Joe deserves yeah. that as well. Oh, it's ridiculous. Of how good of a coach. Yeah. Yeah. Of like how good of a coach Joe is, but no one else gets to see because it's we'll call him over in a second. Yeah. But one, one other thing <laughs> we'll talk about, yeah. we're going to call him over. But, yeah, tell, it, tell us how you met our good friend Adam Smith. Yeah, yeah that was through Summit Sports. So, um, went sparring Dan as he's done a few, like, sparred Dan quite a few times. Mm. And but a McGirt's boy. Yeah, and, and I think he just, Dan just put a word into Summit mm. and also said to us, Luke. I know of this new, um, you know, starting management. You know, I, I think it'd be a good move for Kyle. I'll put a good word in, you know. Mm. So it's actually Dan that put a good word into them. They contact me, mm. and obviously we went. Um, we need to get Dan on the podcast. Yeah, actually. he's yeah. good lad. Dan has been good to me, but oh, we went up and did him. Um, just went up after sparring in London to go meet them and meet Adam and just kicked it off. So it took a while for the get it all sorted. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure everyone was mm -hmm. right. And then, yeah, but you know, I knew they were the right move because Adam come watch me fight yeah. before I'd even sign with them, yeah. which, you know, shows to me. And He's a good guy, Adam. You know, he had to yeah, travel to right. come watch. So if someone's taking the time out and showing an interest, that means, you know, mm -hmm. They're gonna do right for me, you know. Yeah, you, oh yeah, it was like having well, yeah. I, having Adam Smith in your changing oh, room man. just before you walk out yeah, in a small yeah, hall show. Yeah, you know, yeah, we were only with Adam, right? Yeah, we, we were yeah. only like in a in a little room. Yeah. You know, people were like, oh, it's Adam, it's yeah, Adam Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to just yeah. go in box first, but but you, you know, know what? Being surrounded by people that you see on TV, you look up to, right? And then seeing the other side of me, you start to realise, oh, that is normal. Well, he sports Liverpool. Like, we're always yeah, messaging yeah, back yeah. and forth about Liverpool. He's become... Yeah. We pray yeah. for him. <laughs> Adam, Adam, we're praying for you. Manchester United is your life. Get to live like your life, but man. It's just like, I did, like, the whole team, like, I messaged the whole team. Uh, and, it, and it's just like just some new friends now as well as being a team which is that's what me and Joe are so you know that's what it is and my mum's involved in it as well she sorts it all out so it stayed it's actually worked out well because someone's understood that yeah, yeah. it's a family team it's yeah, not yeah, just yeah. like you know my mum's the best one to go through because she sorts everything out and me and Joe do the training so actually yeah, yeah. No yeah, yeah. Yeah. it's no stress and mum so sorts it all and takes it all up the stress load off Joe so Joe sorts sparring training mum mm. sort like mm. oh well you know Summit has asked if we can if you can do this or mum mm. sorted this out made sure I wasn't at work all people that make it you see you see uh, Taylor Swift or Beyonce, whoever you might see them as the front person, but no one makes about a team. Oh, no, no one's a, no one's an island. No, there's no one man gang. It's, you, know you know, I mean? it's both like sports really expensive as well, more yeah, expensive yeah, than you know. Yeah. You've got their medicals every year. You know. Uh, Traveling up yeah. and down the nutritional food without even mm. getting the nutrition, it's then buying the food as well and mm. staying on it. Yeah. You know, it's just that's why I help fighters out with nutrition for free because yeah. the one thing that I can do being a nutritionist 
is give back to certain there's there's fighters out there like there's a fighter the weekend who who's now got a blood clot to the brain and so i sit at home every time i see that stuff saying ah like just it doesn't need to happen you yeah. can make weight properly yeah. like i helped echo in his last fight a question when he was in a, a, a war i don't know if you saw that yeah. fight he got yeah. done a nice against so, owen cooper was yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah so if you watch ring if you watch <laughs> if you watch me, off, yeah. yeah if you watch me ringside go listen to that interview after the fight you watch me ringside i'm sat next to him like that i'm like so emotionally charged and then he come and he came out of the ring straight away come backstage all day to give an interview because i'm his nutritious plus a podcaster, he walked past them all, we hugged each other. We had this really emotional moment, didn't we, darling? And then he said to me straight away, he said, if the nutrition wasn't on the point, I want to get that's, yeah. that's, well, that's what like, we've had. Um, I've had Pete at Qualified Nutrition since I first turned over. So I was one of his first fighters. You know, he, does, uh, he does a lot of yeah, people yeah. now, but I was yeah. one of the first in 2017 and he's had me the whole. And like I said, it, it's good having someone who knows you through and through and he knows support. what to tell support. you to eat and like yeah. that's one part of my life now that I'm like I don't worry about I've got yeah, my food yeah. you know Pete will message me every morning asking how everything's going and being motivated and like Pete's a friend as well so yeah, yeah. that's another friend that is also part of the team so exactly and then I don't have to worry about weight. If a lot, I know if I'm eating mm. what I'm told and and doing the training, mm. you now I mean performing. Mm. Whereas, like you said, if you do stuff dangerously, yeah. it, it, yeah. it can not also cost your health. It can cost you a fight. Yeah, it can cost your life. And, yeah. so and, and you don't want to have yeah. excuses for oh well I yeah. didn't eat this right yeah. or because no, it doesn't wash sometimes with people the excuses. So. The, the problem with uneducated people what have not got nutritionists involved, which I would advise every pro to be around a nutritionist, even if it's not for me, I'm not trying to sell myself, is that you have a camp and throughout bringing your weight down slowly each week, eating food at certain times, getting yourself within five, six pounds of the weight, then it's all right for maybe one or two days to change certain foods, you know what I'm trying to say, I'm not going to give it out on camera, but you change certain food groups and change certain things, mm -hmm. drift in and come out, right? What's not acceptable is drifting in and out of certain foods each week. You see kids with sweat proofs on training, sweat proofs, that must stop. Like if there's anyone out there right now being told to wear, by anyone to wear sweat proofs in camp, it's wrong. So you're not burning fat, it's you're burning water, water. you're just yeah. getting rid of water. Yeah, drink, and even if you're drinking and, yeah. and even if you're drinking water nice, back, it? <laughs> yeah, it's not nice. Even if you're drinking water back, you're not replacing sodium, you're only replacing water. I mean there should be electrolytes yeah. involved. So this has to this has to change. Yeah, that's why we have like a, most of the days I have a rehydration rehydration drink in meal yeah. prep yeah. just to put everything that has been yeah, yeah. sweated out. Electrolytes didn't have all that. that um, no, we didn't know. Totally we didn't bad. know. Not, my, totally my, my, I was being told you would say how tall I am, like yeah. ten stone. Ten stone. And they're keeping me at ten stone. So I was ten stone from fifteen to thirty. Oh, I can't remember last time I was yeah. ten stone. I was like Diego Corrales yeah. at the second day, yeah. like tall. <laughs> It's not no, good. When I met my wife, she, the first thing her mum said to me was not how low it says, we're going to feed you. Because <laughs> I, I didn't look healthy, you know what I mean? No, that's what I like. Um, super middle is perfect for me. Cause yeah. Build muscle and yeah, I can make it wow, and mm. I feel good there. You know, I, I could make, I was making light every way on the day, same day weigh in. So mm. that's for, you know, I can make super middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. And there, there's no need to push it any lower because I felt comfortable. Yeah. Like I've been, I've been sparring super middles, light heavies. Just get strong. It's to, do with, it's to do with performance. Look at Manny Pacquiao. Mm -hmm. Pacquiao was like, people say he's cheating. I, I'm not going to get into that. All I know is the guy was eating and fighting. Yeah. And he wasn't having to worry about, you know, making it. Look what he did to Margarita. Big margarita drains all the way to get scales, but it's like he bashed him from pillar to post. Yeah. You, know you take mean? a lot out of you and then yeah, it shows. Some, 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 some boxing, just like when I go in training camp, you're training to lose the weight, yeah. where you supposed to be just training for the fight. Yeah, and that's. Looking technique, your strength. Yeah, and that's something that's yeah. like. We try not to do it all because mm. you spend mm. three weeks your training camp doing, you know, 
all the cardio and everything other than boxing to lose the weight and then you miss out on one part that should be it should go hand in hand this you know, the, boxing cardio there's been a thousand fighters hundreds of thousands of fighters that should have been world champions but on the week of the fight they did everything killed the performance and we'll never know how good it could be mm. i've been around them in gyms i've seen fighters better than the the, the world champions that I've trained I've trained around eight world champions I've seen fighters that are better than them eight world champions but the week of the, the fight did everything wrong affected the performance and that's, they'll never know you just don't know what I mean like you want to lose you want to know when you lose in the ring you want to lose because you know you want the better fight and not because you can yeah. perform do you know what I mean yeah, that's yeah, and especially like the start of my career as well, I don't want nothing like that to trip me up, you know, I don't want yeah. to do all that I could have been or would have been or yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't do that right, like, if I'm doing anything right, like, say, if you get beat, you get beat. You've got but, to yeah. right and play, yeah. so just do what you can yeah. do. I'm happy for you because you yeah. you got your head screwed on. Oh, you got try good, to. Yeah, you got good people around you. It's important. It's massive. Everyone, everyone else is like pretty grounded. The whole team is mm. because we've all not at the top yet or being there mm. we're all still like yeah. learning and yeah. not speaking out too much and you know yeah. obviously like we've got Adam and that like they're the type of people who can give us the experience because they've yeah. been there yeah, yeah, exactly. so, so we do have the experienced people around and we're yeah. mixing with experienced people and we're taking the experience and yeah. the tips off all the different people and piecing it together and, and seeing what works and doesn't work all right, so the trainer's here. He probably thinks we don't know who he is, but unfortunately we do know who you are because yeah. I do a lot of studying within the game. I talk to a lot of people and Tundi says nothing but good things about you to me. Tundi says that way before he went down to London, you was going down to London to learn your craft and putting yourself around people. I love that because back in the 90s when I decided I wanted to box, I got on a train at 15 years old and went to Prince Nazim's gym and went in as a 15 year old kid and surrounded myself by Johnny Nelson, Prince Nazim, Ryan Rhodes, Neville Brown, the list is endless. So I've got nothing but admiration for someone who's trying to better themselves. So we'll start with, why did you do that? Um, it was just, just at the time really that I thought, Tundi and Yard were making a lot of noise. They, I liked the style, what they were using. Uh, it was something different. I thought, oh, yeah, I, I like that. Um, went down, spoke to Tundi, and he said, no, no, come down, spend all day here. You know, it's a busy gym, the Peacock gym. That's where they were when they first started. I thought, yeah, I like it around here. I, like, I liked all the noise. I liked the fact that Sunday had been out to America and worked, watched Freddie Roach and watched the Mayweathers and watched all that. And I thought that's something I want to do now. I want to develop my coaching in this way. And yeah, since 2017, I. Uh, been in contact with Tundi and he's given me give me loads of advice and loads of uh, feedback. Tell us about the tell us about the you can still hear me from there, can't you, darling? <laughs> if he holds it, can you still hear me? Yeah? <laughs> you are holding it. No, no, you hold it. You need to get used to it. You're gonna be holding it a lot more, right? <laughs> so tell us it takes courage to do that though. So how did he reach out to Tundi? Was it an Instagram? How how did he make that move? Oh, what the hell now you're asking? Um, I think it was Instagram. I think I, I reached out to him on Instagram. Because um, he was working with a lad, Otto Saba, um, and I seen him on Sky Sports when they used to do the ringside on Sky Sports. I thought, oh, he's a different different sort of coach. For, you know, from the, your typical UK coaching, um, what I'd been used to as coaching, mm. I, I thought, yeah, I, I like that. I like that. It was more the American style that I, I really thought that's that's something definitely. Gordon, we want to we want to work with that. And you know what? He's a nice bloke as well. Mm. A lot of people shut the door in me. I contacted hundreds of coaches mm. to come in and try and get like a little insight in. I didn't even, I just wanted to watch in the corner. I didn't want to be in anyone's way or nothing like that. I just wanted to see like how a, like, the top level run their camps and how it was different from what I'd been used to. And yeah, it was the, it was the fact that Sunday welcomed me into his group really. 
and traveling all the way down to London. What was that like the first time you went down? <laughs> I got the train, <laughs> funny story actually, I got the train down um, and went there, trained there, up, like, trained a bit myself, then watched Tundi and then <laughs> on the way back Tundi gave me one of his stamina for sale t-shirts mm. and on the way back I uh, get in the train back, next thing I just sat on the train, my phone had like 1% battery died on my phone, I thought oh this is going to be a long train <laughs> journey. Next thing, this whole arm started going off in the train station and just seeing about 150 people running down the ramp, you know, at Euston train station, yeah. running down the ramp. And I was like, what's going, what's going on here? We evacuated the train station. I had to go underneath Euston train station. They had a bomb scare. <laughs> they had a bomb scare. So about three o'clock in the morning, yeah. I managed to get the train back, but it stopped at every single state. I think I got home about six o'clock. So yeah, the first time I went down there, that's what happened. Did I thought, that, so? <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that now. <laughs> so. That's dedication. Yeah, yeah, I thought, probably shouldn't go back there. Somebody's telling me not to go back, but now nah, I, I went back for years and years and years. And then I was lucky enough to take Kyle with me when, to give him, I think you were boxing in the Harringay, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, I thought, yeah, just give him a little boost before the Harringay, mm. we'll take him down there. <laughs> and he was only 16 or 17, but he ended up sparring yard, yeah, didn't you? Yeah, and, I didn't know that was But I'd seen, I'd seen Ant spar. Yeah, yeah. And I thought, I think, like, everyone. No, 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 certainly not, but, but when he, uh, when you turned 18, oh, yeah. he, he <laughs> we had a proper a spar. Then, yeah, he even told me before. Said, oh, like, he said you're a man now, so we're gonna, you know, have a proper spar. And it, that's what I mean. Like when I say yeah. it was a proper spar. Obviously, yeah. only yours in that room now. But yeah, it was a difference from being 16 and not sparring him since I was 16, 17, mm -hmm. to I was 18, and you, yeah. You always have that sort of stay, that flamboyant stay. Yeah, I think, well, I... Oh, I did, you, did, did you put it together? No, nah, I think, uh, well, you can say, I've always been a bit my own style, I would say, but... We've been watching it for a while, but yeah, yeah, yeah. actually. Yeah, we, we, we developed... We, developed, yeah. We, we developed it, and I, I think it's a style that's... It's a unique style, really. And I don't discourage any boxer from, like, mm. doing their own thing and putting their own spin on things, because mm. I think that's really important. Yeah that it's not just me saying that's right or that's wrong. Mm. I spent a little bit of time with um, Paddy Fitzpatrick as a boxer myself, mm. and he used to tell me that like there was no wrong way of coaching. Mm. Mm. There's just be, as long as you were consistent mm. with what you were doing with them, mm. like there was no wrong way. And mm. it was something I really took as a coach to go, well, that's a different way of looking at it, and that's an interesting way of looking at it. That, mm develop the fighters and their styles, don't just develop them into being robots. Yeah, 100%. When we come from a gym, the Ingalls can't watch. We switch in and that, well, it, that. The honest, yeah. the, the honest to God truth, that's like, that, that gym's had a knocking effect on everything that's ever happened in, in uh, England because you got Errol Graham who went down first, then Naz obviously took it to the next level. Mm -hmm. You was always encouraged to express yourself. You was never encouraged to like be a robot, you know. The, all, the only thing that they did to get you ready for it is like what we was talking off camera. You had lines on the floor mm -hmm. and you'd have to do your line drills. And the first thing they did when you got down and they could see talent, Brendan said to me, don't talk to me until I talk to you. And they didn't talk to me for six months. And I didn't, <laughs> chuck, a, I didn't, I didn't chuck a punch for six months. And he had me on up and down the lines until I could drill it. And then one morning he turned around and says, uh, put your gloves on. And I thought he was talking to John Faxton behind me, which he was, but he was also talking to me as well. And he says, right, yeah, put your gloves on. And then John Faxton says to me, he says, he's on about you too. So put the gloves on. I'm like, what am I doing? And he goes, all right, everyone out. And then he put me in the ring with John Faxton who was getting ready for Ricky Hatton. And he goes, you're going to spar today. <laughs> and that was a shock. You understand, put me on the spot. But what he'd done really clever is he knew that, that I would be all right because of the footwork. That's what I was saying to you off, off camera. There's too many fighters that consume self working on, you know, upper body movement, not really focusing on positioning of feet. And all the top guys 
can give you the illusion that they're closer to you or further away from you than they really are mm -hmm. by positioning yourself. And if you get the footwork right, it's funny how everything just falls into place. But I, I can see the bigger picture now. So he's invested, yeah, and the investment that he's put into himself is now coming back on you, and it has a knock-on effect. And I, can see, I know he's appreciative of it. Do you know what I mean? He said he won't want to work with anyone else if you're not around. Your family, man. Yeah. Family. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah. And that's the um, sort of atmosphere and what I'm looking to create here at Bluestone. Like, like the, it, I'm not just a trainer. I, I, I know I am just a trainer too. Like, like, but I really do treat them like my kids, to be honest with you. Well, I can see that. Like, see that. Like, um, Kyle, Aaron, Jack, the, all, all the fighters that I train. And I don't train a lot of fighters, mm. but I really do give everything I've got to them. I mean, uh, my missus has just flown to Florida today, yeah. and uh, yeah, I've stayed here. Sorry, you'll get fed tonight. He's taking him to the yard place down there. Is he like yard food as well? Yeah, he does, yeah. Oh, oh, you, yeah. He's a curry goat guy. We're curry goat guys. What, what do you, what do you yeah, like? yeah, I'll do Mom. curry goat. Yeah. Curry goat. I'm a curry, curry goat. goat. Curry chicken. <laughs> oh, it's all fish and chicken. Don't um, blend, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> the both of us don't blend, though. Yeah. 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 It's all right. No, I was like, after the fight, yeah, after the fight. fight. <laughs> no, planting, we want planting. Yeah, planting, planting well, fried planting. Yeah, we've got the planting at home already. Okay, okay. <laughs> nice, thank you very much. What, what I love about what you said there, though, is that to be a coach is not always about boxing, it's life skills. The fighter has to have a, an emotional connection with the trainer. It's a unique relationship. You have to feel stability, you have to feel trust. We're in, a, we're in a game where there's not a lot of trust around. There's a lot of school doggery and things go around. There's a lot of fights that don't make it because you don't learn to trust. And he knows he's looking. Now you're seeing this, darling. You see, I'm talking to you, yes, I'm talking to you. See the trust, he's going in there to take punches, but he trusts what he says. We go to a zebra crossing and you're pulling me back and I'm saying it's, it's green. <laughs> Did you start to read? You see the level of trust there, so next time we go out there and it says green man, we can walk across the road, Did you start what I mean? They walk past you. No, because if I always say to her, says, if I walk out and get knocked over, you should be with me. Just, she's back there and I'm walking out, Did you start what I mean? <laughs> I mean, you've got to learn, you're going to watch this podcast back and learn that level of trust. But <laughs> on, on a serious note, though, that is big. You know, to be to be to go out and actually know the person you you can't go back because there's some. Listen, let's be truthful here. There's some trainers don't throw that white towel and when they need that someone's taking a beating and the towel needs to go in or whatever. You need to know that you're fighting to your full capacity and the guy in the corner. Is reading that situation for you, so there's no, there's no, there's no doubt in your head. Does that, does that make sense? Because as soon as the fighter has that doubt, you've been in that situation, right? Because yeah, if the trainer knows you're a fighter, yeah. and you know, oh, nah, he, he will cry, <laughs> throw it in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some trainers don't do that. I don't understand. Because he knows you as a person, he's emotional. Oh, yeah, so he knows if I want to come out. What, he also knows what I can and can't do and that. So yeah. it makes it a lot easier because he's never asking me something yeah. that I cannot do. I know I can always do it mm. if he's asking me because he won't be asking me if I can't do it. That Stuff that I can't do is for training, for doing and training, not for trying on fight now when mm. someone's trying to take me head off. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Listen, this has been really good. We're going to leave it there, but I promise you it's not going to be the last time we spoke to Kyle. You might become a regular, you're only an hour and a half away from us. But we are coming back when he's a champion. Well, no, what are you want about champion? Eh? I'm going to be coming back well before that because she says he's going to get some yard food, so I'll be back in a week. You know I mean? But what we, what we do before we go, but I'm going to let you, you guys are going to work. We've never done it this way before, and it's normal one person, but you guys are going to work as a team, so we're going to play a game. Oh. Right. <laughs> and, and you, right. And the winner, the winner stays in. But you've got to be on the same page. If you feel different to to the coach, then sorry, you, gonna, you can sort out. We're, 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 we're gonna sort out. But too fast. I, 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 <laughs> too powerful. So we're gonna we're gonna do super. We're gonna do super middleweights. All right, the winner stays in. No, I think Joe's gonna be on top yeah, of you. It's my name in there. <laughs> your, de your, your name is definitely not in here, man. <laughs> okay, so the winner stays in.
Nigel, Ben, V, Jermaine, Taylor, talk to each other. For me, I think Nigel, Ben winning that comfortably. I'll go with you. I'll go with Nigel, Ben. No, 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 I would have gone Nigel. I would have gone Nigel, Ben, anyway. <laughs> no, I would have gone Nigel Ben anyway, to be fair. Nigel Ben? Yeah, yeah. back the Brit. Yeah, Nigel Ben. Okay, so Nigel Ben's like, it's going to be interesting. Nigel Ben v Andre Ward. Oh, well, I'm going Andre Ward. <laughs> I knew you were going to fight. It's one of my favourite fighters. Um, you say the same one? Yeah. 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 yeah I don't think you can argue with that. Okay, this one's going to be hard to beat Ward for this, me. This next one's going to be good. Yeah, I know you're going to say, but he, he, he's a little bit my generation. So, uh, Andre Ward is still in against James Tony. Oh, well, you it. Well, this is where my head is. Hey, hey, James Tony. Yeah. Likes well, it's my best. best. I'll let Kyle answer this because I James know you got to agree. <laughs> no, well, we already uh, uh, James Tony's my favourite fighter, so it's going to be James, James Tony. Uh, sorry, Andre. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bit of bias, but. <laughs> James Tony be Steve Collins. I don't even know Steve. I'm going to go James Tony still. Yeah, James Tony so, beats Steve yeah. Collins. He's a good Irish fighter, though, with Steve it's, Collins. It was tough, man. Yeah. Tough. Okay, James Tony beat Christian Banks. Oh, Senior, by the way. Senior. Put that Yeah, I agree, I agree. Okay. James Tony's doing well. James Tony v. Canelo Alvarez. Oh. Sad. That's a good fight, isn't it? It's good fight. That's, <laughs> That's a good mm. fight. <laughs> what was the. Who's James back. Tony's best win? Mm-hmm. Uh, Who's James Tony's best win? He's a lot of good guys, isn't he, really? Nah, I'm not helping I can't <laughs> think. <laughs> Who's James himself? Tony's best Who's win? Let's win. Go and talk to him. Talk I'm yourself. missing someone out, aren't I? I can't think. I know he's got go people in his box, with, but he's not. Go with James Tony. <laughs> Oh, James Tony. Okay, James. I, think, we'll, we'll I, I, I personally think James Tony beat Canelo. In the both. Different breed, tough guy. Yeah, we're going with James Tony. Yeah, we're going with James Tony. Right. Defensively better than. Really? So yeah. it's going to get a bit more interesting now. Lights out. James Tony v. Carl Frock. James Tony. I love Carl Frock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like Carl Frock. Tough, isn't it? No, he's tough. Uh, Still going for him, it now. I, I met him as a. Uh, at a dinner, one, dinner do once and yeah I got on with him quite well yeah. I thought seems like he's just not going to give <laughs> but, up but, but, um, but I'm going to say James just for the boxing defence yeah we'll keep remember, Kyle up. remember we were saying Kyle Frotch versus Eubanks at the best no, but that's a totally different no, no, thing no, we can ask him off we're saying we're talking about don't confuse the game mate don't confuse the game so even we'll then, talk about that one yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. All right. So James Tony is still in. All right. Now it's going to get interesting. Next two are going to get interesting. James Tony v Calzaghi. Do you know what? I think Calzaghi is it. Yeah, I, well, I want to say. I'll, I'll, say I'll let you. I'll Calzaghi. let you. I'll let you take on that. Yeah, Calzaghi. What do you say? Well, you, we don't know you, we don't know how you think so. We don't know nah, I think you were beating the styles, but maybe a bit too active. Just turning. Calzaghi always finds a way to win. Just maybe through a bit too much, a bit too active. Now, how it's l- leveled out, the next fighter, I'm going to change this a little bit because Carl Zagger has a win over this next guy. But I want you to answer this guy in his prime. Carl Zagger be Roy Jones. Roy Jones. Roy Jones. In his prime. Roy Jones. Roy Jones. Roy And all the other names, let's go through this quick. Well, I knew Roy were going to win, but let's go through this. Roy v. Nigel Ben. Roy. Roy v. James, uh, Jermaine Taylor. Roy, I haven't Roy beats them all in prime. Roy v. Andre Ward. Mm, Roy still. Roy v. Uh, James Tony, will he beat him anyway? Oh, Roy v. Steve Collins, easy. Roy v. Chris Eubanks Sr. Roy v. Canelo. I'll let you say that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Roy, yeah he was Roy. unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. In the prime, yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, athletically. And, and then Roy v. Carl. So Roy Jones Jr. is the winner. 
Oh wait. But it was big it's a, it's a good big up, <laughs> yeah. big up Roy Jones Jr. He's my best fighter of all time as well. Yeah. Guys, thanks for tuning in to the 13th for final round. Before we go, we just want to leave the last word. I'm gonna put you on the spot now. I'll go on then. <laughs> to Kyle, your audience tuning in there. What is a thing that no one knows about you but you want them to know about you? Oh no, you have put me on the spot. It's good to close your eyes. Facts. Close your eyes and think about yourself. I can't really think of anything. <laughs> I can't really think of nothing. You can ask for help. Personality. Yeah, I'll ask. I'll go on. What do you think? Stay on time or both work together Ooh. and help them out. What do you pretty. want the audience to know about you, but no one else knows? I don't really go. I don't really know. Might have to tap my mum in for this one. <laughs> mum, help him out. <laughs> nah, I'm not too sure. Not it's not nothing that no one really knows. I'm pretty. No one knows anything yet, do they, mate? No. Yeah, no. but stuff Tell them what we don't know, then. Know. Tell them what we don't know about you yet. Because there you go. That's what they don't know about you. Go on, I'll let you have this one, Joe. I'll let you out. What, 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 <laughs> what is it they don't know about him yet? He's a future of British boxer. There you go. Mm. I like Joe Sage. Yeah. Mm. We've, yeah. heard, we've heard the same thing as well. <laughs> He's humble, though. I like that. Yeah, He's, he keeps yeah. his feet in the ground. Tell them where they can follow you on social media. Oh yeah, Instagram, Kyle underscore Davies underscore Boxer. Um, Facebook, for instance, Car Davies Boxer. And then obviously um, boxing in September. So if anyone does want to come watch or- Tell them where you're or, fighting, tell them where you're fighting. fighting. In Nottingham, is it? Yeah. Rush Craft. Uh, yeah, 28th. With promotion? Pardon? What promotion? Uh, it's uh, Scott Carlo okay, show. Okay. Yeah, so. How can they buy tickets? Through me. Yeah. So, um, or if you Bluestone Boxing Gym, so if you message the Bluestone Gym mm -hmm. on Instagram, um, any of that way to get tickets. There's no link or nothing, it's just through us. If or you have Joe. a problem with that, make sure you DM us, we'll get the information. Yeah, back or if, or if any of you they come through, you guys, yeah. just message me, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Are you looking for sponsorship? He's the next yeah. prospect from England. Yeah, so always looking for sponsorship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. You need it. Goes a long way. You need it. We do. We do. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, share, press the notification button, and tell a friend to tell a friend. That means you've subscribed, so you get the subscription and, and we get here. the notifications. And we're here. And we're out. Third team and the final round. Hit them up, man. That's it.